co-hosing. Hello, I'm Miriam Rachel, and you are watching Mama on the Prairie. This is where I share my journey of living an intentional lifestyle within a co-housing community. Today, I'll share with you four reasons why we chose to live in a co-housing community. First of all, if you don't know what co-housing is, I'll link my video on that up above. Four reasons that we chose to live in a co-housing community. Number one, close community that values relationships. One of the things that I really love about living here at Makoko is that we really know all of our neighbors and everyone knows us. And I think about this one time, we went to go visit one of our friends who lives in an apartment building and my daughter didn't understand the concept that you don't just knock on people's doors and you don't just walk in to other people's houses because she's so used to everyone's homes here being open and welcome to her. One of the other nice things about knowing your neighbors is if you ever need to borrow something, especially at the last minute, people have your back. So one time I needed to borrow flour and I just had to knock next door and within like a minute, I was good to go. I also think of this one time that my neighbor was in our courtyard and I could hear her asking people for cream and I just like shouted out my window like we have cream <laughs> and then I just ran it downstairs. Another thing about really knowing our neighbors is that we have taken the time to get to know each other. So one of the things that we do around here is we have community dinners twice a week and the nice thing about it is it's a chance to sit down with other neighbors that maybe you haven't seen throughout the week and over time you really get to know them. Also with having a close community with strong relationships is that there's always people to talk to you after you've had a good day or even a really bad day. There's been times when I've come home from having a really bad day and it's just really nice to be able to knock on somebody's door and have a friend there who also happens to be your neighbor in your community. And then when they get tired of having you, you can go home to your own private space. Reason number two, sustainability. One of the things that I really appreciate about living here is being able to learn how to live more sustainable. For example, we have a compost bin that everyone in the community puts all of their food scraps into and it makes this nice, rich compost. The compost turns out so nutritious for our own organic garden. And it's really cool that something that we've discarded comes back and helps us grow more food. Speaking of organic gardening, that is another thing that I really appreciate. We have beautiful green space here at Mikoko, including a meadow and a small little forest area. And we have a lot of wildlife around here, which includes deer, birds, turkeys, and a lot of pollinators. And one of the things that I love about the organic garden is that because it's organic, we don't use any pesticides or sprays. So not only are we not consuming chemicals in our food that we're growing, but we're not risking the well-being of our wildlife and pollinators that are right here. One of the really cool things that one of our teams here at Makoko has done is they arranged for us to have an energy audit. The company that we had come in, studied our building, came into each of our units, counted things like how many slats of radiator we have, measured our windows, all of that good stuff and they came up with an energy report to us and they will come in and not only switch out our light bulbs that are using a lot of energy for LED lights, which lasts like forever, but they will also come in and swap out our shower heads so that we're not using as much water collectively as a community. Another way that we build sustainability here at Makoko is while only some of the houses have solar power on top, we collectively actually have a subscription to something called an urban solar farm. And it's basically set up on top of like a parking ramp and roofs. And it is a bunch of solar panels locally that uh, get the sun's energy and then we can offset our carbon footprint by subscribing to that energy. Another way that we live sustainably here is that we have access to clothes lines, clothes lines, clothes lines. It's really nice because on a hot summer day, yes, it gets very humid here, but on a hot summer day, we can go hang up our clothes and within a couple hours, our clothes are dry. Not only are we saving energy by not using the dryer, but we're also reducing the cost to all of us collectively 
from using the energy for the dryer. Reason number three, the benefit of sharing. Sharing can include skills, space, tools, work, and meals. And when we first moved here, I don't think I completely understood that sharing included so much. Since moving here, I have learned a lot of skills. We have learned how to live more sustainably. Besides the fact that we're composting regularly, we also stopped using plastic wrap altogether in the kitchen, so we don't even buy it anymore. Another skill that I've really picked up is I've learned how to garden. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. I've learned so much from gardening here. There are a lot of experts. And anytime you have a question about why is my plant looking sad, or is it okay if I plant this here and all that knowledge of rotating certain vegetables so that you don't get viruses into the ground and such like that that could take out like tomato plants. I learned all of that from community members. Another skill that I've really been inspired is how to live more frugal. So I have a video coming up about the buy nothing group but the whole idea is not to consume and buy things unless you absolutely need to. I've become so good at thrifting. I love thrift stores. I used to shop at thrift stores once in a while, but now they're my main go-to. I even think about my daughter's entire wardrobe. Everything that she has for this fall as of right now either came from hand-me-downs or from the thrift store. It also saves a lot of money for us to put towards other things like student debt. Another thing I've learned about living more frugally is recently went down to an 80% capsule wardrobe and everything I have I can just pick and go for work. It's so easy. Laundry is so easy. Most of my wardrobe is white and black. Being a musician, the black works out really well. It's the best thing I've ever done. And it also means to wear what we have in our closet. There were many items that I was not wearing regularly or I'd only worn it once. And it just felt, it feels so silly for me. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't buy things. There are some things that I really do believe in investing in, such as a really good pair of boots or a really good pair of shoes. I'd rather be able to repair those items than have to be able to throw them out and get a completely new item. I also have skills to offer. Being a violinist and a violin teacher, I actually taught a group class to just some of my neighbors at a super reduced price. And it was really fun because not only did I get to know my neighbors, but my neighbors also had the opportunity to try a violin out and see if they liked it. And it, it was really fun. I had, I had a blast. Some of the things that my neighbors have had to offer, for example, are internet. So we actually have a Wi-Fi system set up here at Makoko, and it wasn't until our second year living here when some of our new neighbors moved in and it happened to be tech people, and they were really knowledgeable in how to set up a system so that we could have Wi-Fi. The thing is, is living within a hundred year old building, our walls are like stone and super thick, and they had to really get creative on how to get the Wi-Fi signal to get to everybody, but they were able to get that and it saves all of us so much money and just paying for it collectively as a community is so nice and it works great. Another thing that's really amazing is that there are a lot of people here that have woodworking skills. We actually have a wood shop down in the basement and there's all sorts of tools that people have either purchased together or brought in when they moved and not only does it make it really easy for our neighbors who have those skills to be able to help repair things in our house, or one of our neighbors built a new play structure for our kids to play on, and it's, it's amazing, it's beautiful, the kids love it. It saved us so much money from having to go and buy one that is made in a factory somewhere. The play structure is actually really unique, and the kids really enjoy playing on it because of its uniqueness. Another thing that is shared is spaces. One of the things that I love is being a violinist. I have a place that I can go and teach violin in where my child isn't jumping around like a silly human and distracting from my time with my students. So I'm able to use our library for teaching violin, which is so wonderful, both in person and when I have to teach remotely with COVID. It's a really beautiful space. And it also has a fireplace and sometimes we even have quiet nights down there. Um, you can read and have a fire. But the other thing about our spaces is that we can use them for other things too. It's a great place to be able to host events. One of the things that we do around here is that 
during non-COVID times, we have people come in for an open house where people can actually take a tour of our mansion and ask questions about what co-housing actually is. And it's a great way for us to get to know our outside neighbors beyond our little community here. Another thing that we share is work. So with having over two acres of land and having a mansion, we have a lot of upkeep around here. Not to mention that this building is 100 years old and requires a lot of big projects. Things like keeping our community kitchen clean, our bathrooms, our living room, taking out the garbage, all of those things, nobody's gonna do that for us. So we all sign up for those jobs and then those are kind of our chores. One of the things that I also really like about shared work is that it gives my daughter an opportunity to have to be able to help out somewhere. In a way, she is investing in her community as well. Another thing that we share around here are meals. So it's really nice because twice a week, we usually have a community meal. Usually somebody cooks downstairs in our big kitchen. However, sometimes we just do a bring your own dinner as well. One really nice thing about the community meals is it means once a week that we don't have to cook dinner unless it's our night to cook for the community. And actually one of the things that happens a lot too is people will take the opportunity to team up with another neighbor to cook dinner. So that way you have a chance to kind of catch up and you're not doing it by yourself. We also have a cleanup crew that signs up and they're supposed to help with cleaning. So that also just helps share the work and spread it around for everyone. Reason number four, financial perks. If we have to replace the roof, it's not just our household that's paying for it. We have 14 other households that are also contributing to that cost. So things like our roof, our water heater, our plumbing, structural things, et cetera, et cetera. When we have to invest money into those, we're doing it as a community and collectively instead of all by ourselves. If we were living in a house all by ourselves without being within a co-housing community, there's no way that we would be able to afford to repair a roof or put in new pipes or update our water heater. Another financial perk is that we have neighbors that know how to repair a lot of things. For example, we needed to have some cabinetry work done this summer and one of our neighbors was able to do it. And not only was it nice to be able to pay, be paying somebody locally that's within our direct co-housing community, but it also meant that we didn't have to hire out a contractor or a contracting company, which was so incredibly expensive and definitely outside of our budget. Another financial perk is because we think about sustainability, we have a reduced energy cost collectively, and that really helps us save on things like water and electricity, et cetera, et cetera. And anything to lower our bills is amazing because this building is so large. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.